Good afternoon and uh, welcome to our next live event where we're going to hear another another great discussion. Um, I'd like to introduce our next presenter, Angela Carter's quest to help others. And a Angela's quest, Angela Carter's quest is to help others. And she has done so throughout her professional work life and uh, work life as well as volunteering with various organizations. Angela is currently the executive director uh, for the Roots Community Services Incorporated, a charitable multi-service organization that provides culturally relevant programs and services to inspire individuals, primarily from the Black, African and Caribbean communities to make positive changes in their lives and within the communities and within their communities. Even today, there's a vaccination clinic that they're engaging with at um, the Brampton Civic Center. In this capacity, she actively advocates for the upliftment of Black people and works tirelessly to break down systemic and other barriers that continue to negatively impact members of these communities. She currently co-chairs the Anti-Black Racism and Systemic Discrimination Collective in the region of Peel and represents Roots Community Services on a number of committees in Peel, Halton Region and Toronto that are seeking equity and equality for all groups, especially the Black community. Thank you, Angela. Thank you very much, Marcia. And it's a, a, it's a pleasure to be here to uh, to provide um, information about the work we're doing and to speak to parents uh, about a new program that's just started and to bring them up to date on what is going, what is happening. So uh, just to give some insight into uh, our organization and who we are. Next page. Next slide, please. Yes. So, Many of you may know us as United Achievers Community Services. We were formerly uh, um, the, the United Achievers Community Services and we changed our name two years ago, uh, 2019 pre-COVID uh, to Roots Community Services. And we did that after we had gone through um, uh, great uh, discussions with the community. And we had looked, we went to the community and asked about what we were doing, what they would like to see done and one of the things that came back was rebranding which we'll talk about a, a little later. So as a United Achievers we were in, uh, established in 1985 by the United Achievers Club which is, still is in, which is still in existence now and the club saw the need for community services within um, the region and they established uh, community services. We were incorporated in 1998 and we received our start charitable status in 2000. Our mandate from the beginning was to focus on Black, African and Caribbean communities because we under, we realized from then, from way back then, that this, our group was underserved in many areas and there was a need for a focus lens on our community. So right now we are based in Brampton. Uh, we have a satellite office in Mississauga and we're also working in the Halton region. Next slide. Our mission is to provide culturally relevant programs and services to inspire residents to make positive changes in their lives and within their communities. And we are very um, intentional about this. We say to inspire residents because we can't change people. We can't change people's uh, uh, experiences or, or thoughts, or, but what we can do is inspire them to, to make that, uh, those changes themselves. And as we said, just now we do focus on black African and Caribbean communities because we know there is that need for us to have that in attention and we work closely with our community members to help them to make positive changes within their lives. Next slide. And our vision, we see that we are uh, ourselves as a leader in the transformation to ensure equity and equality for our communities in the region of Peel and beyond. And as I mentioned, we are we have uh, also moved into the Halton region and we're providing services there at Halton region. And going on to the next slide to our, our strategic, strategic priorities, we uh, so we right now we we have um, out of that consultation actually with the community um, 
members, we came up with five strategic priorities that we worked through. Uh, and this was done through our strate strategic planning um, sessions. We are actually at the stage where we are doing um, strategic planning again this year to look beyond uh, COVID and look to see what changes we need to make because of COVID. And because we know COVID really, uh, the COVID-19 pandemic really affected our lives in many, many ways. So we looked at capacity building, and that is to ensure that we have a strong foundation and the necessary resources to be able to deliver the services that we want to deliver and to deliver them in a quality way. We want to ensure that when our clients come to us, when our uh, 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 the community members come to us, they are receiving uh, services and programs that are of high quality, high standard, and that they can walk away feeling that they were well served. So capacity building was one of the uh, one of the key um, strategic uh, priorities that we concentrated on. Financial stability is obviously a, a major one. We know that as a nonprofit organization, we have to rely heavily on funding uh, from various sources, but primarily from the government and from donors from the community. So we needed to make sure that we put a focus and consist a consistent focus on our financial stability to ensure that we have the, the funds to be able to offer the services that we offer to our clients. Our services are free. We do not uh, um, charge a fee for our services. Uh, so and we would like to keep it that way. Um, it may come a time if we don't have enough funding that we may need to do that, but hopefully we can get enough funding especially hope they, hopefully the uh, community will support us to be able to provide the services for those who will, who need that service. Stakeholder engagement, that means that we were reaching out to you, the community, uh, keeping in contact with our funders and donors and making sure that um, everyone understands what we're doing. They know how we are, uh, the services and programs we are offering. When things are changing, we let you know. And, and this last year has actually been a major change for us, especially in our programming. But that is something we want to make sure through our stakeholder engagement and governance. Of course, we need great oversight. Uh, we have a board that of, um, that uh, looks after and make sure that we are doing the things we need to do and that we are following and are compliant with uh, with um, with government regulations. And the rebranding is what I spoke of. That is something we did. We are, we are now Roots Community Services and we are building that brand uh, to be what does it mean and uh, actually involving the community again. We talk about deep roots, strong communities, and we're using the brand to really ensure that we can, uh, that we live our, our mission and, and, and try to achieve our vision. So going on to our next slide, we talk about our board and our staff. Right now, we, we are governed by a board of directors uh, we have uh, nine directors that provide oversight for the organization and currently there are 22 members on staff. We've grown tremendously within the last couple of years and 13 on special assignment. And this is a special assignment dealing with the COVID-19 pandemic. We are one of the lead agencies within the region of Peel. There are five other lead agencies that have been, um, have been funded through the high priorities high priority community strategy to ensure that members of our communities have the information that they need to understand what is happening within the COVID, with the COVID pandemic to keep themselves safe, to ensure they have up to date information and to provide them with the necessary information so they can make informed decisions about how they can protect themselves and their families. As Marsha mentioned, we are today starting a uh, uh, a clinic for the Black African and Caribbean communities because again, we have a very low uptake in, the, in vaccines um, and being vaccinated, but we within our various communities, we have high numbers of cases. We want to make sure that our members are safe. We want to make sure that you know how to protect yourself and your families and what supports are available for you to be able to do that. If you have to be off from work for any time, how can we help you to make sure that that your, that blow is cushioned so that you can make it through? So we, we are there. We ha have ambassadors that have been going out into the community, talking with members of the community, providing um, um, PPEs and answering questions. 
We also have a team that's in um, that's not on the on the road, but they're there if you need more more supports if you need to get help with um, with foods uh, or, or with, with groceries, with with meals, with um, rent or so to tide you over. Uh, we we are there to help you to guide you where you can go. So those are the things. Those special, those uh, thirteen members of, of staff that are on special assignment are doing that right now. And we do also have con contract staff as well. We work with a number of uh, contract employees. So. Who we serve, our next slide, we talk about who we serve and we provide programs for seniors, women, men, families, youth, children, the full gamut. So we run programs from ages six right through to seniors well into their 90s. And these programs are, uh, or, or if you go to our website at rootscs.org, that is R-O-O-T-S-C-S.org, you find full information there because I don't think I'll have enough time to really go through each one of them in depth, but you'll find the information there as well as the uh, the program coordinators that are responsible for each of the programs. But for the children, we have an after school program. Um, once a week, they get together, uh, have discussions about life. And then we all, through that program, we also provide tutoring, one on one tutoring to students, to, to children who need that help. And in the summer, we have summer camp. And actually, we are preparing now for this year's summer camp. This will be the second year we've been doing a virtual summer camp. Uh, information will be out about that shortly. For our youth, we have a youth outreach worker program where we work with youth who are um, struggling to cope. And we also have a youth, uh, a youth business mentoring program. We are just getting ready to start our next cohort for that, where we match uh, youth who want to become entrepreneurs or want to go understand more about business to be matched to a mentor to help them to develop business plans and to learn and, and uh, attend workshops where they can understand the fundamentals of running a business successfully. Our families programs are really in collaboration with Peel CAS and Halton CS, as well as the Reach Out Center for Kids in Halton region. So we work closely with, uh, with um, partners uh, to provide culturally appropriate counseling services to a parent, to youth, and to families in general to help them to, especially those that are involved with the CASs, to, to be able to um, have leave that, leave, leave the care if they're in care with the CAS, to leave care as soon as possible or reduce the time they have to be involved with the CAS. So a lot of our family po families programs are um, with the CASs to help our families to be, uh, to move away or for, to have less involvement with CES. We also have a family program where we offer deep counseling for those who really are struggling to cope and need the, the help of a psychotherapist. We have a program called Healthy Mind, Strong Will, and that program is there for families as well. The program I'm going to talk about as well is going to come under that families program. For the men's program, we have a uh, uh, a, a, a counselor who works with men one on one to one. We know that men don't like to talk about their issues, but we know all of us have issues at times and we especially when it's emotional and there's a counselor who works with them. And then once a month we have an open forum It's a public forum. It's called Black Men Speak Up and they're able to uh, to talk to uh, in a general forum to speak to men and women who want to join in, but it's a public forum to provide information and where others can hear from men who have struggled and are even some are still struggling, but they're able to provide how they are coping and working through the issues. Our women's program deal, deal with women who are in violence uh, and violence against women um, who are in domestic uh, abuse situations, I should say, and we work with them to help them to build back their confidence to find a safety plan and to help them to be able to cope with what they are facing and to be able to re move themselves away from that those those abusive situations because no one should be abused no matter what the situation no one should be abused and our seniors program we really very proud that we call that our flagship program actually it's a program that uh, for our seniors 55 years and over although the majority of our seniors are 65 and over and they are uh, we have about 300 members in that program and they do 
they have they have functions uh, uh, activities almost every day of the week uh, before uh, COVID, we used to have in-person sessions and they would get together and do a number of different activities. They would go on trips. The summertime was really fun. They had picnics, they did tours. Obviously, all of that was uh, curtailed when with, with the COVID and right now they're doing that virtually. So they meet virtually and actually they do go on vacations. A virtual vacations is one of the things they do, which is a lot of fun. And we do, um, you know, help them to reduce any sense of loneliness or isolation they may feel. So they have contact with us five days a week. We would reach out to our seniors and provide them with, um, you know, confidence building um, techniques and also to connect them with each other so that they can continue to fellowship with each other. Uh, and we also um, involved with other things in the community as well. We, for example, we did the um, tax free tax clinic this year. We did it virtually. Uh, and, you know, there are other things we, uh, we give. Uh, we partner with others to do um, uh, give out groceries at uh, Thanksgiving, Christmas and, and Easter. And, you know, the other things we do within the community, which are project based. But our, our main programs we run on a, on a daily basis. So that takes us out now to the next slide, which is about the program we're talking about, this the Student and Family Advocate. And this is a new initiative by the Ontario government. And the, for the government, for them, they, they know, they realize that, again, as we said, as I said earlier, our black community are still being underserved in a number of different ways. There are a lot of um, social and economic um, uh, barriers and it's resulting from a lot of hysteric and systemic and structural barriers that we we know has a impact that have impacted our community disproportionately so this program the student and family advocate initiative has been developed by the government to provide um, services specifically in this area and go to the next slide we talk a bit about the programs the overview of the program so for this program uh, I, I will read this one because it's it's important. Black students, we know black students experience disparities in educational outcomes, often as a result of historic systemic and structural barriers that disproportionately impact black communities. And the SFA initiative supports black led focus organization to develop and implement highly targeted community based and culturally relevant advocacy support tailored to the experiences and needs of black students ages 6 to 25 and families in the greater Toronto area, Hamilton and, and Ottawa. Next slide. Next slide. So the objectives of the initiative, we want to, we are designing, developing and delivering targeted community based and culturally relevant uh, supports for families, for black students and their families. We are providing support to students and their families by ed educating on their behalf and helping them to navigate the school systems. And this is school from primary school right through to university. Uh, we are developing and offering wraparound services for students who, ident who are identified at greater risk of not completing high school. So we will work with students and their families one on one to find out what what are the specific barriers that are that they're facing that is stopping them from succe from succeeding in school. So we will provide case management, work with them, find them the supports that they need to be able to to um, overcome the challenges that are that they're facing. And we will also intercede on behalf of the students and the parents and help them navigate the school system. So we will work on behalf of the students and families with the schools to help to break down any barriers that uh, individual individual families may face to provide and and be there to help build build bridges. Our intention is to build bridges, not to really to have a us and them kind of attitude. So our, our program is going to be dealing quite a lot of, with that. So going on to the next slide, the, uh, the role of the SFA. So we have two student and family advocates. One is going to be working in Peel region and one is going to be working in Halton region. And they will work directly with the students and families and develop individual strategies for overcoming these barriers. So uh, what we will also do, what they will go to, go to the next slide. Thanks. 
So how we will how we are going to be working, we will work with a, a family and we will say, OK, what what are the issues? The family could come to us directly or could be referred from the school and we would work with them to say. OK, what exactly are you? Is it that you're struggling in a subject, uh, a specific subject? Is it that the school think you have a behavioral problem? Is it what whatever it may be? And we will discuss that with the family, see where the, 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 the issues are, help them to put together a plan to help them overcome whatever the issues may be. We will also work with the school because we know that from a cultural perspective, there, there's a lot of misunderstanding and misinterpretation of some of our, our, our children's behaviors. Um, we know that coming from the Caribbean, and I'm, I know there are African countries that uh, have the same uh, situation, that we were taught not to stare at an adult in the, in the face. That was considered to be rude. So we would not really look straight in, in, into the eyes of, of, of someone in authority. Even at this stage of my life, sometimes I don't like staring people in their faces because I think it is you, you kind of like staring them down, you know, or it's challenging. In this culture, though, here in Canada, it's not or North America is not seen that way. If you don't look someone in the face, they think you have something to hide. And and a, and, a, and a teacher talking to a youngster that grew, grew up in a, a, a Caribbean household that is taught not to stare an adult in the face. They may always think the child is being defiant or have something to hide or not being truthful. And that child can get into um, problems because of that. We want to work with schools, work with, with the various schools and, and, and the schools and the school boards to talk about these cultural differences, help them to understand what our, uh, our children are facing, how they are torn between what they're learning at home and what they're learning at school and helping them to overcome that. So we want to be teaching and working alongside the schools to provide information to help them to understand cult the cultural um, differences and nuances so that they do not put more pressure on a child to make that child feel that they are lesser than or don't have the skills necessary to be successful. So that is what we are. That's our intention. We will be working and providing um, work. We'll be working with the school boards and with the individual schools to provide workshops, deliver workshops similar to this. We are going to be co-designing this and what we want to also do is to to deliver these programs with our, our with our um, staff as well as with someone from the school board so that parents can see us working together and the students will see us working together and that we are collaborating to make it better for others. And it isn't that we ourselves are coming in as experts and doing certain things, but that the school is also learning because if they learn, if if the parents see that the school's um, principals or teachers or guidance counselors are delivering the programs with us, they will see that they are learning as well to better understand the community, the, the, the community they're serving. So we are going to be doing a lot of co-designing and co-delivering workshops for the community, but we will also be there to help families if they do have situations, uh, um, uh, um, negative situations to help them work through that. And also, as I said, to provide that individual counseling case management with individual families. So that that is what this program is really about. So going on to the next slide to we'll talk about the outcomes we are looking for. So the, the outcomes obviously is that this we have school and education systems that are informed by and responsive to the needs of black students, families and communities and, we, and to identify and address systemic barriers to their achievements, equity and well-being. We know that um, Systemic barriers are not easy to move. They're systemic, as we say. They are uh, they're institutionalized. They've been there for centuries. So we know that it takes time, but there's people that people who work within the systems that will need to make the changes that are necessary. So yes, the systems are there and people come in and follow what has been done before. But who the people who are there now were well, the ones that make a conscious effort and a, and a de conscious decision to say, you know what, this is this system is not correct. We need to we need to break it down. We need to implement things that are going to work for everyone, but they must have the will. They must have the know how and must be willing to 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 
to stay focused because it's a hard task. It is not something that is easy to do and of and from and from our communities as well, because we some of us have been um, indoctrinated to think a certain way. So many of us have to unlearn some of the things that we have learned as well as you know, as uh, to be able to work along with the schools, along with the school administrators to say, yes, this is the way we want to go. School administrators need to reach out to the communities and get their input because they cannot, while they are leading the way, they cannot do it by themselves. They need input of the community to say, this is what works best for us. These other things over here are barriers. These other things over here cause us stress. This is what works best. And the administrators then need to take that information and be able to put that, um, uh, will be able to then take that and devise and new systems that work for all, for everyone. Another positive outcome is black students are better supported and see increases in the educational achievements and attainments and retention, including tra successful transitions to post-secondary educations and careers. And black students, families, and communities have positive and collaborative relationships with schools, school education systems and a sense of belonging to the systems. So when together we are, uh, we work to, when we work together to break down those systems, we will see positive outcomes. We will see a better relationship between our communities and the schools, and we would see um, our students graduating in a much higher at a much higher rate, fewer absenteeism, fewer uh, suspensions. I know that we're not supposed to, supposed to suspend, but I understand there's in school suspensions. So fewer in school suspensions and and students coming out feeling good about themselves, not feeling that they don't belong. Our, we belong to the society in which we live. We must feel a part of it and we must feel that we have some say in what happens and it has to start very early from in the school system. So that's my presentation. I hope that you have learned something and I, if you have any questions, I can answer them for you. Thank you. So Marsha, do you have any questions? I'm coming gun. Yeah, currently I do not see any questions in the Q&A. We had one comment. I had accidentally <laughs> deleted it. I was trying to move it to another panel um, and it was uh, from one of the participants saying that they have engaged with uh, Roots, which is great. Um, I think that they were just expressing some obstacles that they had had in the past, um, just uh, navigating Roots. Um, I'm not sure all of the details of that, but I can say that uh, as, as Angela shared in the beginning, that Roots has been um, continuing to grow as an as an as an organization and she's talked a bit about its evolution um and they have um now even grown into two different spaces um i know that they they do have someone manning their their phones and angela can speak to that um regularly with their community service line i'm not sure if she mentioned that in her pr yeah, presentation I, I didn't talk about our, com our community support yeah. line so, yes that's oh, a new and yeah. a new uh, a service we provided starting late last year and for and, and it's there that support line is there for anyone who wants to call and and uh, have a who wants to just have someone to listen to them they may be going through a tough period at a time and don't know where to where to turn and we are there to provide a listening ear and if the um the support line specialist are able to provide, uh, they can listen if you want, just want to talk, but if you need it, needed more support, they'd be able to direct you to the best person that can help you. And yes, I know sometimes, and we've had some negative um, comments. Well, we've, I, I would say we've had a lot more positive than negatives, but some people have not have had um, bad experiences with some of us over time. And, you know, unfortunately that has happened and we and we apologize for that from you having a bad experience or not getting it resolved. Uh, you know, sometimes um, you I know, so that that can happen with with any organization right. and, and especially when we're going through transitions and growing pains. Um, and so I think that as you, you you explained really well about the development of Roots and, and how it, it was birthed from um, Brampton, uh, from um, United from Achievers Club. Yeah, and I've known Angela from the time I was just a student <laughs> out of high school. 
I'm not going to say a long time ago, but <laughs> a long time ago. <laughs> um, and and, uh, and so you can see that this, there's been quite an evolution. The organization's been around for a long time, and then there was the branch. And, and so sometimes things like this do happen, but it, feedback is always good to an organization if you if you've had any challenges just to call them back with with feedback is also really good so that they can continue to um, evolve and grow and, and support your needs. Are there any questions about the uh, the new role? Um, that's that's great that we have an advocate, you know, just to to be there readily available for us to navigate the system or to ask those questions or or to stand up and support. Um, are there any questions about about that uh, family advocate role? I would say that we work closely with a number of schools as well and families within the schools. Uh, schools contact us with uh, asking about our services and referring to um, families and families come directly to us as well from the schools. So, you know, we are we are available. If for some reason we are unable to to handle a, a, a situation, we would refer to another um, another organization. But we will also give a give that warm handoff. But we we try as as much as possible to really uh, provide the service that that is needed because they're not unfortunately they're not a lot of black um, led black focused black serving organizations in the region of Peel, and we are hoping that that would in, in, improve. Uh, I mean, there are a few, so we would work closely together and would um, would refer to another organization that may be able to or have the capacity to 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 manage and to help. OK, thank you, everybody. Um, so that is it for our uh, live event for 12 o'clock. There will be another live event again at one o'clock from Knowledge Bookstore. Uh, so please tune in at one o'clock. You can take a refresher, a lunch break, a, a, a little walk, or you can listen to the next symposium while on a walk. That's the great thing about being virtual these days is that we can take it with us, right? We don't have to sit in the Rose Theater or at a, a recreation center. We can also listen on the go. That's Enjoy. Great. Thank you very much. Thank you, Marcia. Thank you to the team. At, Thank you, uh, Angela, for the presentation. You're welcome. Thank you. Bye. Good luck this afternoon. Thank you very much. Thanks. <laughs> Bye. Bye.